many documentary projects and images that photographers take become quite controversial. This happens because some photos are difficult to look at or the story they tell does not correspond to our own ideas about society. It is probably difficult for us to perceive these photographs now, but at one time they caused a great public outcry, drew attention to social and other problems in society, and also helped to solve them. This is the same story about today's photography. Girl in a Cotton Mill, photographer Lewis Hine, 1909. This photo is also included in Time magazine's list of the 100 most significant photographs of all time. The magazine's list includes only one work by Lewis Hine, but the entire series is worthy of mention. American photographer Lewis Wicks Hine was born on September 26, 1874, in the American city of Oshkosh. As a child, he worked in a local factory to earn some money. In many ways, this determined his future. As an adult, he studied at the University of Chicago and then received a master's degree in sociology from New York University. In 1901, Hine began teaching at the School of Ethical Culture in New York and later worked as a sociology teacher in the Jewish Slavic ghetto of New York. He began taking photographs in 1905. His first photographs told about the fate of immigrants who were pouring into the United States in a continuous stream, showing their poverty, confusion, and unrealistic hope for a better future, if not for themselves, then at least for their children. His works were imbued with humanistic pathos, and new magazines, fighting for the speedy implementation of social legislation, eagerly published them. Inspired by his success, Hein left school and became a professional photographer. In 1908, Lewis Hine became a staff photographer for the National Child Labor Commit, which launched the first campaign in U.S. history against the exploitation of children in the workplace. Child labor was widespread in the United States at the time. And Lewis Hine decided to fight this. He considered the best way to document the children's work on film. As a child, Lewis himself had to work in a factory, and he understood that it was hellish work. Therefore, he began his ten-year journey of fighting for children's rights. Each photograph was given to him with great difficulty. None of the owners of factories and production facilities wanted to admit that they were actively using child labor. But he always infiltrated factories, sometimes as an industrial photographer, sometimes as an insurance agent or a priest. And he always photographed children. And I even wrote down their stories. After all, children worked equally with adults, but received much less for it. Moreover, they worked in all industries, even if they were dangerous for adults. At the same time, this was presented to society as a good example of educating young people. Lewis Hine put together an entire gallery dedicated to child labor, which he called the Lost Generation. He photographed the children and signed almost every one of them. Five-year-old Maud Daly and three-year-old Gray Daly, 1911. Harvesting shrimp for a seafood company in Mississippi. Loder Owens. Twelve years old. Can't read. Doesn't know the alphabet. He says, yes, I want to study, but I can't, I'm always busy with work. Worked at the factory for four years. Some boys and girls are so small that they have to climb onto the looms one of the textile factory workers. Sometimes he works at night. Does all the work for 48 cents a day. Answering her age, he hesitates and says, I don't remember. Then he says, I'm not old enough to work, but I do it just as well as adults. Of the 50 workers here, 10 are children her age. A boy sells newspapers. 1921, a boy works in a cotton mill in Newton, North Carolina. 1908. A 13-year-old boy pushes a coal cart at the Knoxville Iron Company mine near Coal Creek, now Lake City, in Tennessee, U.S. 1910. Five-year-old Harold Walker picks cotton in Oklahoma, 1916. There are only five students in the school. Low attendance is due to the fact that many children work harvesting sugar beets. Fort Morgan, Colorado. A girl stands near the machines at a cotton mill in Newberry, South Carolina. 1908, inside a tobacco barn. The girls in the photo are 8, 9, and 10 years old and received 50 cents per day of work.
At this production, there were 12 children from 8 to 14 years old, and about 15 children over 15. State of Connecticut A Little Newsboy, Sleeping on a Staircase in Jersey City, New Jersey, November 1912 In 1912, these and many other photographs of child labor were published and shocked America. People suddenly found out that children were working in truly hellish conditions. In the United States, for the first time they started talking about limiting the work of children in factories by setting a minimum age of 16 years. And it was already a success, but the owners of the factories, on the contrary, lobbied for the law to legalize children's education there, calling it useful for society and the development of children. In 1916, the United States had already passed a law prohibiting the sale of any goods in the production of which child labor was used. However, they were able to finally win only in 1941.